The moon is full. The breeze a chillin'. It's a night for ghostly thrillers. <laughs> a warning I give you just before bed. Make sure all is quiet out in the shed. <laughs> Once a peddler who arrived with his pack of goods at a remote farmhouse in the green mountains of Vermont just as dusk was falling. He asked if he might pass the night there since it was a six hour walk to the nearest inn. The farmer and his sons agreed and acted very glad to have him. And they were. So glad, in fact, that before the sun came up again, they had murdered the peddler, robbed him, and buried his body under the dirt floor of the shed behind the kitchen. They got away with it, too. As the years passed, more settlers came to that region. The son who had inherited the house sold it, moved further west where he could carry on the family tradition undisturbed. The new owners were a perfectly law-abiding and God-fearing family, but they had no more knowledge of the peddler than if he had never existed in the first place. Although the peddler's skeleton moldered beneath the floor, his troubled spirit was still too upset to leave. <coughs> the new people ate all their meals in the big kitchen only a few feet away from the peddler's grave. But they were totally unaware of him. They didn't even know his name. While he didn't relish spending eternity in the shed, the peddler's ghost was determined that someone should realize he was buried there before he moved on. It became an obsession. So he began by opening the kitchen door that led to the shed. Next morning, while the peddler watched, the farmer's wife came in to make breakfast. She slammed that door without even looking at it. That night, the ghost opened the door again. At dawn, the eldest son walked right through without noticing, tramped over the grave, and out the back door of the shed to the wood pile. On the third morning, the farmer came through from the outside with a bucket in each hand and kicked the door shut behind him. After a week of this, the peddler's ghost began opening the door by day as well as by night. All that happened this time is that the children were blamed for letting in drafts, and the children accused each other of being the culprit. This caused a bit more stir, but the peddler still wasn't getting anywhere. When the door slowly swung open in full sight at breakfast, the farmer told his eldest son to fix the latch. The boy tinkered for the better part of the morning. When he finished, he showed off his handiwork to his father. But it didn't last very long. The farmer said he'd fix it himself. Took the whole next day to do it, but before the family went to bed that night, the farmer had installed a small but sturdy lock on the door. He hung the key on a nail driven into the frame. The peddler was not pleased, but neither was he deterred at what the farmer had done. At dawn, the door stood open as usual. The farmer began sleeping with the key on a cord about his neck. Still, the door kept opening. 
the farmer rehung the door, sanded the sill, checked the pintles, and added a strong bolt under the lock. Now the ghost was tired of being polite. farmer took to his bed for three days. When he recovered, the farmer put the door back on its hinges and then pretended it didn't exist. He ordered the family to go in and out of the house by the front door every time they needed kindling. This did not suit the ghost at all. For a time, he remained silent by way of apology. But after a week had passed, he began slamming the door at intervals. The farmer and his family ignored it. Finally, the peddler could bear it no more. As soon as it was daylight, the farmer and his eldest son attacked the pile of debris with the intention of hauling it away and burning the lot. They displaced a good deal of the dirt floor in the process. They also displaced a leg. The whole family gathered and gaped as the farmer uncovered the rest of the bones and the shredded remains of the peddler's pack. Everyone was thinking the same thing, but no one dared say it. The eldest son picked up a corroded piece of metal and blew the dust off it. It was a watch case, broken, but inscribed with a name. The farmer peered at the engraving and read the name aloud, Samuel Pym. Behind them, the peddler sighed. Yes, Samuel Pym was his name. The farmer called in the constable and the minister, and between them all, it was decided that the bones belonged to someone cruelly murdered and deserving of a decent burial. The next Sunday, the bones were reinterred in the local burying ground beneath a simple stone reading, Samuel Pym. After that, kitchen door behaved itself. shed might make you quiver, but untold noises will make you shiver. Once there was a father who had two sons. 
Everyone agreed that the younger one, Jack, was stupid, and the elder one was clever. Yet when the father asked his elder son to go on an errand late at night that led past a scary place, the boy would say, oh, I can't go there. It makes me shiver. Send Jack. Or sometimes when people sat around the fireplace telling ghost stories, someone would say, Ooh, that makes me shiver. Jack would always wonder, What does it mean to, to shiver? Jack was never afraid. One day Jack's father said, Son, you must learn a trade. I want to learn to shiver. I would love to know that. Jack's father told the village sexton of his troubles. Send him to me, said the sexton. I'll teach him to shiver. So Jack was sent to the sexton's home. The sexton took him to his house. You shall soon learn what shivering is, said the sexton. He told Jack to ring the bells in the church tower at midnight. came to Jack's house. The sexton blamed Jack's stupidity for his misfortune. Jack's father was afraid his son would give the family a bad name, so he gave him some money and sent him away, saying, I am sure that no one here will want to teach you how to shiver. Well, I'll try my luck somewhere else. As he walked along the country road the next day, he kept mumbling, If I only knew what it is to shiver. By chance, a man overheard him. Look, he said to Jack, see that gallows over there? Spend the night under it, and by morning, you'll know what shivering is. Oh, thank you, thank you. Jack made himself comfortable under the gallows. The night was cool, so he kindled a fire. Looking up, he felt sorry for the two corpses dangling in the wind. Hey, you two, come on down. The fire is warm enough for all of us. The corpses remained silent, so Jack climbed up and cut them loose. He sat them upright by the blaze and talked to them, but they only stared into the night. Huh. With company like this, it's best to go to sleep. The next morning, the man came back and asked if Jack had found out what shivering is. Shivering? No. Boredom? Yes. The man shook his head. Then he said, Try the haunted castle in the next town. Jack found the castle and went to the king. I have been told that I might learn to shiver in your castle. The king looked at him with sad eyes. Yes, yeah, this is the right place. An evil spirit has put my daughter to sleep. He who can spend three nights in a row in this haunted castle shall set her free. Many have tried, but they have all perished. Go away. You are so young. No, I'll stay. On the first night, Jack was sitting alone by the hearth, when suddenly a cat with two heads jumped out of the fire. Would you like to play a game of cards? Good idea! Then he 
they went to bed. In the morning, the king came. What happened last night? Have you learned to shiver? Well, I was attacked by a two-headed cat, but it didn't make me shiver at all. On the second night, he was sleeping, when suddenly the bed began to move. <laughs> seemed tired, and Jack himself soon fell asleep. In the morning, the king came, and was astonished to hear of the previous evening's events, but he was very glad to find that Jack was still alive. It's no use. I'll never learn how to shiver. On the third night, he was putting a log on the fire. He heard a great howling and screaming. The door opened slowly, making hardly any noise. Suddenly, the top half of a monster moved into the room. Poor thing. It must be terribly uncomfortable to have no legs to stand on. Ah, that's better. What can I do? Would anyone care for some bowling? This lad is too good. Let's take him away with us. Oh, no, you don't. If there is anything monsters hate, it is fire. So they all fled into the night. Jack went to sleep. In the morning, the king came and once again was happy to find Jack still alive. How was last night? Oh, splendid. I had a fine bowling game with some monsters and enjoyed myself very much. Were you afraid? Did you shiver? Oh, no. I don't think I'll ever learn. Well, bless you. Anyway, three nights have passed. You have broken the evil spell and freed my beautiful daughter. Come, I will introduce you to her. When Jack and the princess met, they fell in love and wanted to become man and wife. The king was pleased, and the marriage was celebrated with great joy. Pleased as Jack was to be a prince and to have such a lovely wife, one thing still bothered him. Oh, if I only knew how to shiver, my happiness would be complete. Suddenly, the princess thought of a way to solve the problem. That night, when Jack was asleep, the princess drew back his nightshirt and poured the pailful of small fish all over him. <laughs> say adieu. I hope we meet again, don't you? <laughs>